Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, some of you are telling me that my podcasts are too short, lasting only five minutes. But others are telling me that my podcasts need to be more concise and last no longer than five minutes. So to please all of you, I think the best thing to do is to mix them. Make some podcasts at five minutes, some podcasts longer than five minutes, and then you can decide which ones you want to listen to. Well, today uh, I want to talk about some news headlines which are going around the BBC The first one is an interesting one. It's about our council tax. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Britain is currently experiencing financial difficulties. (laughs) Who isn't? Uh, But basically, the the problem seems to be stemmed from uh, COVID and our government's departments, uh, particularly our local council areas, are running much slower than before. Trying to get anything done, I mean, trying to get anything done from the government is always a problem, but trying to get anything done right now requires a lot of efforts and uh, sometimes even arguments. So there's been an announcement that our council tax is going to go up. And this is causing a little bit of stress for a lot of people. So just so that you know, the council tax, sometimes referred to as the poll tax, because that's the system we had before, um, is a tax that we all have to pay. Uh, Each household pays it based on the number of people in the house, where your house is, uh, and a few other related items. So it's a separate tax, and you receive a bill uh, for the year in or around February, March time, and that bill uh, you can pay monthly. So for example, my council tax comes in at around £100 a month. My neighbor's council tax, however, uh, is £150 per month. So why would it be so different? Well, it's because she lives closer to a post office than I do. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it's based around how close you are to a school, how close you are to a post office. Why it's like that, I don't know. But the council tax is there to help you to well, not to help you to do anything, but truly they are to raise money for uh, road cleaning, keeping the roads intact. I mean, who knows how the government uses it? I guess we just don't know, but that's what they tell us. It's for road cleansing, picking up our rubbish. It never used to be a separate tax, but it was brought in in the 1980s under the name Poe Tax. Then it was changed into community charge, and now it's called council tax. So some local governments will be um, increasing the council tax by 5%, which is quite a big jump, 5%. Uh, And also bearing in mind that our governments don't appear to be working right now because of COVID. They say they're short-staffed. I don't really know where this money will be going because nobody's working on the streets right now. Uh, Our people who pick up the trash have just came back from a strike. So it's kind of unclear where the money goes, but I'm sure it goes to a good place or not. Uh, The other thing that I want to tell you is that if you are in the UK and you're finding that the government just isn't responding to your emails or texts or anything like this, go to the locally nominated official. You see, all of our councils, 
they are operated by the people we elect. So there will be a local councillor somewhere who operates that council office. If you go to him and he thinks you're going to not vote for him next time, you will get uh, quite good service. Uh, I've been trying to get my council tax account sorted for the last six months. I went to my local councillor finally just to say, look, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm getting very bizarre emails. Uh, nothing's making any sense. Do I really have to wait another six months for a follow-up answer? Uh, he took it and it was done within a day. So if you are in the UK, go to your elected representative's office or email him and just tell him uh, what's happening and ask him to look into it. And I think you'll find that you'll get a lot more help and support doing that. Other news headlines today, um, Tavistock Children's Gender Clinic has an uncertain future. Uh, apparently, there are more than 7,500 children and young people with gender dysphoria or gender-related distress waiting for help from our National Health Service. Many have been waiting years with nothing on offer. Uh, we have a gender identity development service referred to as GIDS uh, and one of their main offices, the Tavistock and Portman Foundation is set to close because they don't have enough money to keep it running. It's the only gender clinic for children in England and Wales, which is part of our health service. And so nobody knows what it's going to be replaced with. Um, it says here, and what I'm reading, that uh, it'll be replaced with one in London and the other in Northwest England, but uh, this still has to be confirmed. Um, and GIDS workforce is depleting, so who knows what's happening? The whole thing is quite bizarre. I mean, our government can't keep spending money on every single thing. So I guess there will be cuts, like in this case. But um, yeah, these poor children need help, so who knows what's going to happen next. Um, and there's a big long article on the BBC website about that today. Tavistock Children's Gender Clinic Closure Leaves Uncertain Future. Uh, what else do we have today? Um, oh yes, Northern Ireland. So, yeah, as I mentioned the other day in one of my podcasts, the Northern Ireland government doesn't function well. They're, they're always fighting with each other about the Brexit um, because it's one of the main places where imports from Europe come in. Uh, and while that's happening, the Northern Ireland government said there's no way that they could operate because they want to remain part of the UK. They don't want to be remaining like a European state for the purposes of imports. So uh, they're trying to get that fixed. Um, and our prime minister is currently in Northern Ireland trying to agree with them to restart their parliament, promising all kinds of things. But as I mentioned in my podcast yesterday, you know, um, our uh, increasingly autonomous uh, country governments, such as Scotland, England, uh, Northern Ireland and Wales, they no longer uh, want to always support the central government. In fact, most of them are really moving away from the central government uh, because they don't feel supported. And this is another example of that. So that's happening today as well. Um, yeah, other things. This is a really interesting thing, and I'll make this the last one. We've had a woman who's been missing now for, I think, coming up on 30 days. Her name is Nicola Bully, and she was 
uh, an office worker. I think she was working in some kind of real estate. But basically, uh, one day she took her dog for a walk. She sat down at a river and she vanished. Her phone was left on the bench. The dog uh, was found running around still with his leash on his neck. And nobody knows what happened to her. Like most places in, in the UK, uh, there are cameras everywhere for traffic. Uh, so the police know that she didn't leave. Um, so their assumption is that she ended up in the river and probably has been drowned. And uh, there's a lot of big discussions about this as to what really happened to her. Uh, nobody knows. So that's making headline news because the family and the police have been at odds about this. When I say at odds, I mean they've been fighting because the the public have been blaming the police for not doing, well, for not finding her, basically. And uh, the police made a few statements saying they're sure that she's in the river. For whatever reason, how she got there, they don't know, but they're saying that that's probably what happened. The family said, no, 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 there's no way she's in the river, you're wrong. And so the police increasingly had to defend themselves because the public kind of turned against them, which is unusual for here. Usually we don't get involved and we don't support any kind of argument with the police, but uh, the police took the unusual step of issuing personal details about Nicola because they got pressured so much by the public. They eventually said, well, you know, um, we believe she's in the river. Then they gave a big news conference saying, please stop speculating. We've told you what we think. The family said, well, actually, please, you're wrong. And then they made the unusual step of releasing personal information about this missing woman. They said, we know she has alcohol problems. We know that she's going through some personal stuff. Um, and that's why we are sure that she's in the river. And our police are not usually allowed to say that publicly, but they said it as a way to stop people criticizing them. They're saying, look, this is why we think this, because uh, she's got personal problems. And of course, the family really reacted badly to this because nobody wants to hear about a missing woman that she may have killed herself or she may have had alcohol problems or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, so that's an ongoing battle right now. And it's gotten so bad that even our home secretary, that's the the woman uh, that looks after internal affairs in the government, uh, she has asked them to explain why they did this. And now there's a police investigation um, I think they're just defending themselves, but it's kind of unusual for people to really think that the police have done something wrong. It's kind of worrying because there's an increasing feeling now that people don't trust the government, people don't trust the police, people don't trust the, the other uh, services we have. Um, and yeah, I don't know where that's going or where that's going to end because uh, it seems to me that that's increasing, not going away. And for a country like the UK, we usually respect our governments, we respect our authorities. Uh, you know, this is not a state usually where we, 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 we do these things. But things are changing, and like everybody else, uh, we are kind of demanding a better service, or some kind of a better way of of dealing with these things. And um, I don't think the police are ready for that kind of criticism. So that, that's ongoing as well in our uh, public systems. So yeah, times are changing, uh, it seems. It's a worry for me because I don't know what the next step is. I mean, are people going to begin rioting? Are people going to begin seriously protesting? They have a lot to protest about. 
I mean, bearing in mind that our uh, trains are on strike, our buses are on strike, our nurses are on strike, our teachers are on strike, um, the government civil service now is going on strike as well. It seems that less and less is getting done. So that's a national thing, not just a Scottish thing. Uh, so I don't know what, what the central government's going to do or what the police are going to do to get people to trust them more. Um, I think it's about transparency. I mean, all of these systems that we have, they're kind of time-honored systems. You know, they are there because of history. And I think now people are looking for very direct answers. Why are you acting like this is 1970? You know, um, uh, so people are demanding more than in the past. In the past, we just didn't question the police or these kind of institutions. So, yeah, um, I don't know where this is going to end. Uh, it's the same with the church. The churches here are dying very, very quickly because people are asking, well, what are you actually doing for us? I mean, what, what? We give you money, you receive money from the taxpayer. That's the Church of England receives money from the taxpayer. It's a state-sponsored religion. But people are beginning to say, well, what? why do we have to pay this? And what do you do for us? Uh, so it's not just the police. I think there's a lot of questions to be answered. And this is the changing face of the UK. So interesting to see where that's going. Uh, let's hope it remains peaceful, yes. There we are. So you wanted a long podcast, you got one. So I hope you found this helpful. See you. Bye.